Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons. It's another training video I'm doing for my folks. Uh, this video is specifically being done for Elena. This is something I know I needed to teach her, but I hope my other survey techs also check out this video. So this is a video that's going to teach you a little bit about boundary surveying. In this specific video, we are going to talk about the county surveyor map index and the tax assessor land records. So we're going to answer these four questions. Why do we care? Why are we even talking about this? Why is it important? Who is this county surveyor guy or gal? And what do they do? What is the county surveyor map index? And what does the tax assessor have to do with boundary surveying? Why are we, why are we talking about the tax assessor in a video on boundary surveying? Isn't, isn't the tax assessor assesses taxes? What does that have to do with the work we do as boundary surveyors? So I answer all those questions, I hope. All right, so why do we care? Why is this important? It's important because the county surveyor map index and the tax assessor land records are really important tools, at least in California, for boundary research. And boundary research is a really important part of the boundary resolution process. So you can't do a good boundary survey if you haven't evaluated all the available records, you, land records. You can't evaluate all the available land records unless you have done good research. And in California, you can't do good research unless you've checked both the county surveyor map index and the tax assessor land records. Okay, so there's a, there's a chain of dependencies there. You cannot do a good boundary survey in California if you haven't looked at these two things, the county surveyor map index and the tax assessor land records. And I will explain why in this video. So that's why we care. It's important. We can't do a good job as boundary surveyors if we don't know how to use these two tools. Okay, so who is this county surveyor person? And uh, what's their job and what do they have to do with this map index? Okay, so in California, every county has a county surveyor. In larger counties, that will actually be an employee of the county government. Um, in smaller counties, it will probably be a private surveyor that's been contracted to fill that role. Uh, county surveyors do lots of different things, but one of the main things they're required to do under the law um, in fact, I, you could say this is the most important job and the only job they are required to do under law is they are to maintain an index of the survey maps in the county. Okay, so in that way, they are somewhat like the clerk and recorder, right? The clerk and recorder keeps an index and copy of all the deeds that get filed in the county. The county surveyor keeps a copy of and an index of all the maps that get filed in the county. Okay, so that is the main purpose of a county surveyor in California. It's actually in state law. Now, like I said, county surveyors do some other things. They review records of survey, corner records, parcel maps, subdivision, subdivision maps. Uh, they will check legal descriptions for lot line adjustments. They might manage control networks. Uh, but that's their main function under the law is to maintain the, maintain the map index. So what is the county surveyor map index? What is that? It is an index that allows you to locate previous filed surveys in the county based on location. So uh, that's a requirement of the law. The, the law says the county surveyor has to keep an index and it has to be geographic. Okay, so he can't just keep a list of surveys filed by date or by name of the surveyor. The, the index has to have a geographic component. You have to be able to locate excuse me, you have to be able to find surveys based on location, okay? So in that, in that way, the county surveyor map index is more like a title plant than it is the clerk and recorder because the deed index at the clerk and recorder is sequential based on date and time or grantor-grantee index based on name. It is not geographic. That's what a title plant does. A title plant bolts on a geographic index to the information at the clerk and recorder. So you don't have to do that with the county surveyor map index because in California, it's required to be geographical by law. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'll do another video and we'll talk about two or three different kinds of county surveyor map indexes because there's different ways that, that this can be done. Every county is a little bit different. Some ways work better than other ways. Um, so we'll do another video and talk about some of the different kinds of county surveyor map indices or indexes, okay? So that's what the county surveyor map index is. So anytime you're doing a boundary survey, you should go pull all of the available surveys, not only for your parcel, but for neighboring parcels, right? Parcels that any maps that fall into your resolved boundary matrix, you want to pull those. 
All right, so now let's talk about the tax assessor. Why, what are we, why, why are we worried about tax assessor records if we're doing a boundary survey? Okay, there, there's one main reason why. Okay, and that is because in order to do a good boundary survey, you need the current deed for your parcel and you need the current deeds for all the adjoining parcels. Okay, and if you don't own a title plant, the fastest and easiest and least expensive way to find those deeds is to go to the tax assessor. So because we assess property taxes in every part of California, the tax assessor has a very strong interest in understanding who owns each piece of land and what that land is worth, right? What it just, what, what the last sale transaction value was. And so the tax assessor keeps those records. Now, because surveyors don't have they don't own, most surveyors don't own title plants. Um, we don't have an easy way to locate the deed for a specific piece of property other than we go to the tax assessor and say, who owns that parcel and what was the deed they used to buy it? And that record is public record here in California. So the tax assessor has to make that available and it's usually fairly easy to get to. Okay, so it, it, it's almost like GPS. You know, GPS was designed for navigation and timing and surveyors kind of hijacked it and now we use it for highly precise geodetic surveying. So we've kind of done the same thing to the tax assessor land records, right? Ta the tax assessor was never interested in making a, a surveyor's job easier, but we've, we've kind of hijacked that process. We've hijacked their record keeping system and we use it as a shortcut to get to the, to the deed, the vesting deed for a particular parcel real estate parcel without having to deal with, with the title company or, or own a title plant. Okay, so when you're gonna do a boundary survey, almost always we are going to the tax assessor records to pull the current deed that the tax assessor has on file for the parcels that we are trying to survey. Now, a couple important things about that. What that means is if you're dealing with a parcel, either the parcel you're surveying or an adjoining parcel that is not taxed, you are not gonna have this shortcut. It isn't gonna work. Then you're gonna have to go hire a title company or go spend a long time at the clerk and recorders. So that's a gotcha that can that can bite on, on a boundary survey. If you're so anytime you're dealing with non-taxed parcels, you got to remember this shortcut isn't going to work. The other thing is you have to be careful because the tax assessor records aren't always super current. They're not always super up to date. So especially when you're dealing with a lot of property or very valuable property, right? You want to have a title company involved because they're going to give you some guarantee that you have the latest deed and that the property hasn't been sold without you finding out. You know, most tax assessors are lagging behind the actual transaction by a few weeks or even a few months, okay? That doesn't affect us as land surveyors a bunch of the time, but it, it can come up and you wanna be sure that you don't get burned, right? So if you're, if you're dealing with the actual real estate transaction, the tax assessor may not have the most current deeds on file. And again, you're gonna to need to work with the title company or own your own title plan, okay? So that's just a brief introduction to why boundary surveyors need to know about the county surveyor map index and the tax assessor land records. Uh, this general concept applies across the United States, but as an example, I'm licensed in Nevada. Nevada doesn't have county surveyors. So in, the, in that state, uh, the clerk and recorder and the tax assessor actually maintain the map index. There is no county surveyor. So this is gonna be a little bit different state to state, but the concepts apply, right? Just to review, why do we care? These two things are important boundary research tools. Who's the county surveyor? That's the person in California that has the legal responsibility to maintain the surveyor map index. What does the surveyor map index do? It allows you to locate surveys by geographic, find surveys by geographic location. Okay, and why do surveyors care about the tax assessor land records? Because we're using that as a shortcut to find the latest deed or, or, or a recent deed might not be the latest, but but a fairly recent deed for a parcel that is taxable or that has to pay property taxes. There you go. That's more than you wanted to know. You're probably falling asleep. Go grab some coffee. Catch us for the next video. We'll talk some more about county surveyor map indexes and also about tax assessor land records.